A sphygmomanometer with a stethoscope is used to measure the systolic and diastolic blood pressure of a patient in the course of a physical examination. The blood pressure is expressed in millimeters of mercury. There are two methods for measuring these blood pressures. With the palpation method, we put a finger on the brachial artery to determine the approximate systolic pressure and the pulse rate. With the ascultatory method, we listen for the five phases of Karotkov sounds whilst observing the slow descent of a mercury column or a needle dropping against the scale of a sphygmomanometer. There are three main types of sphygmomanometers, mercury type, aneroid or dial type, and the electronic blood pressure meter. For this training module, a mercury table model sphygmomanometer will be used. Other types of blood pressure meters will also be shown so that users will become familiar with their applications. During a clinical examination of a patient, the stethoscope is also used for listening to patients' heart and lung sounds should this examination be necessary. The mechanics of this examination will not be covered by this training module. Although there are many makes and models of blood pressure meters and stethoscopes available on the market, the use, care and maintenance procedures will be quite similar to those used in this training module. A stethoscope consists of the following parts. A metal chest piece with two sides, a bell and a diaphragm side, Y-shaped tubing and a metal spring assembly with plastic ear tips on each end. The tubing and metal spring assembly as units are termed the binaural. The metal spring assembly is normally adjustable so that the user may adjust the width of the assembly so as to provide a comfortable fit and to ensure that the ear tips fit comfortably in the user's ears. The mercury sphygmomanometer is also known as a bomanometer. It consists of a mercury column marked in millimeters of mercury graduations from 0 to 300 millimeters of mercury. It is normally supplied with an adult blood pressure cuff, tubing, an inflation bulb with an airflow control valve. Aneroid sphygmomanometer consists of a dial with the same millimeters of mercury markings around the dial from 0 to 300 millimeters of mercury and the same type of adult cuff, inflation bulb and airflow control valve. Electronic blood pressure units facilitate the automatic reading of a patient's blood pressure. They are becoming more and more popular as a result of their user friendliness and affordability. Electronic blood pressure meters are available as standalone or wall mounted units. They can also be placed on a mobile stand. Most blood pressure devices are supplied with either a standard adult or large adult cuff, or possibly with both. Nonetheless, it has been proven that miscuffing, that is using the incorrect size cuff for the patient's arm, will result in serious errors in reading. It is therefore recommended that the following cuff sizes are available. Child or small adult over the age of 14, for arms between 22 and 26 centimeters in diameter. Adult, for arms between 27 and 34 centimeters in diameter. Large adult, for arms between 35 and 44 centimeters in diameter. And thigh or obese adult, for arms between 45 and 52 centimeters in diameter. These recommendations are made by the American Heart Association. 
It is also recommended that at least three cuff sizes are available for children under the age of 14. Infant for arms between 10 and 12 centimeters in diameter. Small child for arms between 13 and 16 centimeters in diameter. And child for arms between 16 and 20 centimeters in diameter. These sizes should cover the range of 0 to 14 years for infants and children. Similar centimeter sizing may be used by various manufacturers and therefore by merely specifying adult, large adult, child and so on, the required range of sizes will be supplied. The patient should be seated with preferably the left arm closest to the nurse. The arm should be relaxed and supported at heart level. The patient should be seated quietly and relaxed for approximately five minutes before the blood pressure reading takes place. The patient and the nurse should not talk during this procedure. The correct cuff size is then selected and secured firmly but not too tightly around the patient's upper arm ensuring that the tubing is situated posteriorly so that the antecubital fossa is easily accessible for auscultation. The lower edge of the cuff should be 2 to 3 centimeters above the point of the brachial artery pulsation. Should it not be possible for any reason to use the left arm, then use the right, as long as, in general, the same arm is used on that patient as pressures can be different for the left and right arm. Palpatory estimation of blood pressure. The brachial artery should be palpated or felt with the fingertips while the cuff is rapidly inflated to about 30 millimeters of mercury above the point at which the pulse disappears. The cuff is then slowly deflated while the clinician notes the pressure at which the pulse reappears. This is the approximate level of the systolic pressure. Palpatory estimation is important because the phase 1 Karotkov sounds sometimes disappear as pressure is reduced and reappears at a lower level. This is called the ascultatory gap, resulting in systolic pressure being underestimated unless already determined by palpation. The palpatory technique may be useful for patients for whom auscultatory endpoints are difficult to judge accurately, such as pregnant women or patients in shock. Whilst performing this palpatory estimation, this may be an appropriate time to establish the patient's pulse rate by counting the pulse beats for 15 seconds at the brachial artery point and then multiplying the number by 4, resulting in beats per minute. 25 beats in 15 seconds equals 100 beats per minute. The ascultatory method of measuring the systolic and diastolic pressure. Place the stethoscope diaphragm head gently over the brachial artery at the point of maximum pulsation. The stethoscope must be held firmly but without excessive pressure as too much pressure may distort the artery which may affect the accuracy of the reading. The cuff should then be inflated rapidly to about 30 millimeters of mercury above the palpated systolic pressure and then deflated at a rate of 2 to 3 millimeters of mercury per pulse beat or per second during which the auscultatory phenomenon which is described later, will be heard. When all sounds have disappeared, the cuff should be deflated rapidly and completely to prevent venous congestion of the arm. Karotkov sounds. 